Mariner of the Seas was one of the first Royal Caribbean cruise ships to get a Royal Amplified update in 2018. This 138,000 gross ton ship offers a variety of Bahamas and Caribbean cruises sailing from Port Canaveral. We have just returned from a five-day Bahamas cruise and want to share all the details with you. See how this Royal Caribbean cruise ship compares to its sisters with our exclusive Mariner of the Seas cruise ship review up next. Welcome aboard cruisers. I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time. Now as avid Royal Caribbean fans, we've sailed on over 15 different Royal Caribbean cruise ships across the fleet. So we know what it's like to take a Royal Caribbean cruise. Did Mariner of the Seas live up to our expectations? Well, you'll find out in this review. Of course, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section below and we'll be happy to answer them. So let's get started at one of the most popular areas of any cruise ship, the pool deck. Mariner of the Seas does not have the newer Caribbean inspired pool deck found on other amplified ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet, like Oasis of the Seas or Navigator of the Seas. However, there are still two pools and four whirlpools darting the midship main pool area on deck 11. With our crew sailing at close to full capacity, the prime pool deck lounge chairs were mostly secured by breakfast time, though we were able to find loungers on the deck 12 sun deck with ease on both sea days. Mariner of the Seas also has the adults only solarium on deck 11 forward. Unlike some other solariums in the fleet, this pool area is open to the elements, with some seating off the sides, mostly covered from the deck above. Here too, there are two large whirlpools. The Solarium Bar, the Pool Bar, and the Sky Lounge all serve a limited version of the standard drink menu. Again, unlike other updated ships, Mariner of the Seas does not have the popular Lime and Coconut Bar serving up the namesake drink. Of course, you can still grab your favorite frozen drinks like a Pina Colada or the Miami Vice while soaking up the sun. For a short getaway, there is ample outdoor space between the pool deck and sun deck for families and couples alike to enjoy some fun in the sun. The main sports deck on Mariner of the Seas is deck 13 aft. Here you'll find many staple Royal Caribbean activities. Among the additions to the ship in 2018 was the duo of water slides known as the Perfect Storm. These twin racer slides are now standard on many Royal Caribbean ships. There's also the more unique offering, the Sky Pad. This bungee trampoline experience is a fun family activity that even incorporates virtual reality elements. Other sports deck amenities can be found on Mariner of the Seas, including the rock climbing wall and the sports court, which hosted free play and competitions throughout the cruise with various activities like basketball, soccer, and pickleball. There's also the kid-friendly Sky Climber, a jungle gym of sorts, Conveniently located next door are some swings and hammocks. This area is ideal for relaxation after a sports deck workout or while watching the little ones play on the sky climber. All the way aft in deck 13, you'll find the popular Flowrider Surf Simulator. During our cruise, sessions were divided between boogie boarding and advanced surfing. Finally, all the way forward on this deck is a nine hole mini golf course, Mariner Dunes. Don't be surprised if you find a small queue and the lack of adult golf clubs during a busy sea day. Cruising is back. On Mariner of the Seas, there were many of the typical cruise ship activities you'd expect to find on a mega ship. While some of our previous sailings offered a reduced schedule events, the cruise director Mark and his team fit in all the favorites on this five day cruise. There were various sessions of trivia and game shows like the standing room only Harry Potter trivia session and the popular Love and Marriage game show, which took place during the second sea day in the afternoon. Other cruise director activities include dance classes, bingo sessions, and even adult coloring. Somehow, this is now a thing on cruise ships. On the pool deck, there was both the Sexiest Man and Belly Flop contest. You could also watch a movie on the outdoor deck. During one sea day, Studio B was open for free skate, 
And on the last day of our cruise, this venue housed the Battle for Planet Z laser tag game. Both of these are our complimentary activities and our first come first serve. In our cruise, they were very popular. So if you want to do either activity, make sure to get there early. Even the observatorium escape room had several sessions throughout the trip, though this is an upcharge experience. So whether you like to pack your day full of activities or just relax, there were plenty of options to do as much or as little as you wanted on Mariner of the Seas. It wouldn't be a Mariner of the Seas cruise ship review if we didn't talk about the dining. For this cruise, the main dining room on decks 3, 4, and 5 were open every day for breakfast and dinner. The main dining room was also open for lunch on the two sea days. Honestly, given our schedule, we only dined at the main dining room for dinner on four of the five nights. We had my time dining for our party of four adults. And pre-cruise made reservations for 7 p.m. each night. Luckily, once on board, we were able to get the same wait staff each evening. Our team of Geronimo and Cerrone were fantastic. Overall, the food too met our expectations for a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Meals were served at the appropriate temperature and were well plated with adequate spacing between the courses. During this trip, some of the standouts include the coconut shrimp and crab cake appetizers, as well as the prime rib, lamb shank, and turkey dinner for entrees. Though we are never huge fans of cruise ship desserts, I did like the Royal Cheesecake. This June 2022 sailing on Mariner of the Seas felt like one of the busiest cruises we've been on since the restart about a year ago. Still, we found the service on the ship timely and friendly. There were ample bar servers roaming the pool deck as well as staffing the indoor bars. We never waited long for a drink at the popular schooner bar or the Barnacle and Barrel Pub. During breakfast and lunch, the Windjammer was packed. Yet, the crew were quick to clean and clear tables, even at peak times. As we just mentioned, in the main dining room, our wait staff team of Geronimo and Cerrone were excellent. They kept our dinners well paced, getting us in and out around 75 to 90 minutes each evening. However, the bar service was slow in the main dining room. Most nights, we were only able to get one round of drinks, and even that took a while. We missed the days when Royal Caribbean had more dedicated bar servers to support the main dining room staff. For one dinner, we ate the specialty restaurant Chops Grill, and the service was very slow. The venue seemed to be understaffed as our waiter was a one-man show. From getting our drinks to serving food and clearing plates, he did everything. So it was certainly not his fault that this dining experience took close to three hours. Finally, our stateroom attendant, Junior, was courteous and made up our room twice a day, complete with some cute towel animals to greet us in the evenings. He met all our requests and made sure to say hi when we saw him in the hallways, even if he was not much of a conversationalist. Speaking of specialty dining, in addition to all complimentary dining options, including the cruise fare, Mariner of the Seas features several upcharge restaurants as well. During embarkation day, we had lunch at the a la carte pub Playmakers Sports Bar and Arcade, located on Deck 5 in the Royal Promenade. Both Heidi and I really liked this concept and the food offerings. With selections at Playmakers Sports Bar and Arcade starting at just $4, it is reasonably priced. Not to mention, the drinks are included in the Royal Caribbean Deluxe Beverage Package. As previously mentioned, on night two, we dined at the cruise line's signature steakhouse, Chops Grill. While the meal did take over two and a half hours, we thought the food was fantastic. I enjoyed the colossal shrimp cocktail, the filet mignon, and the cheesecake, as well as the Gruyere cheese tater tots. At $59 per person, it is a bit pricey though. Other specialty restaurants on Mariner of the Seas include Jamie's Italian across from Chops Grill on Deck 11. While this restaurant concept is a bit older for the brand, this restaurant features several classic Italian dishes. There's also Izumi hibachi and sushi on deck four. There are not many hibachi tables and even fewer sushi spots. So if you want to dine here, we suggest pre-booking before your trip. Unlike some of the other updated ships, Mariner of the Seas does lack when it comes to casual dining options. The Cafe Promenade is home to a small selection of items for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. These options normally include small sandwiches, pastries, and cookies, as well as other snacks. 
As there is no dedicated Sorrentos on the ship, it also serves pizza most of the day. On the pool deck, there is the Boardwalk Doghouse. First introduced on the Oasis class, this standard serves selections of international sausages and dogs. While I'm a fan of these offerings, I know not everyone enjoys a Coney Island Classic or a Bratwurst while lounging poolside. The other main casual dining option is the Windjammer Buffet. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, this buffet offers a wide selection of items with variable food quality. We dine at the Windjammer twice for breakfast and twice for lunch. While I'm not a big fan of breakfast, the food here was more consistent and predictable. Plus, it's really hard to mess up basics like scrambled eggs, waffles, and breakfast meats. On the other hand, lunch was often underwhelming. The menu options changed daily, and while we did like some of the Mexican offerings on day two, the other options were not what we considered lunch items. While we did not dine at the Windjammer for dinner, the venue did offer a variety of themed evenings. Some of these included American classics, Italian, and Caribbean flavors. If you're a subscriber to this channel, or a follower of our blog or social media, you know we often rave about the entertainment on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. Sadly, Mariner of the Seas did not live up to the cruise line's reputation. In fact, the shows on the ship felt dated and even at times cheesy. In the main theater, there were four shows. These included Center Stage, which was a collection of song and dance numbers by the production cast, with a 20 minute juggling comedian added for good measure. On another night, the Royal Theater hosted a variety show. This felt really thrown together, with each vocal lead singing a solo song, followed by another 20 minute set from a very unfunny comedian. Honestly, we skipped the headliner act, an Elton John tribute, as we had recently seen him on another cruise. Finally, on the last night, the production show Gallery of Dreams was an original production that mixed musical genres and set pieces for another underwhelming show. For us, the best performance of the cruise was the Studio B Ice Show, Ice Under the Big Top. Still, when it comes to Royal Caribbean Ice Shows, this theme ranks near the bottom of my list. Not to say that the skaters weren't talented though. With the main theater entertainment not delivering that royal wow that we're used to, we are happy to say that with the typical lineup of bars and nighttime activities, there is always something else to do each evening. Along with early sessions of trivia, there were also several game shows, including Battle of the Sexes and Majority Rules. Many of the bars and lounges also featured live music. Our two favorite hangouts were the Schooner Bar and the Barnacle and Barrel Pub. Nathan Franco, the piano player in the Schooner Bar, was energetic and got the crowd engaged. While he did tend to play the same songs each evening, he was a lot of fun. It doesn't hurt that we love the cocktail menu in the Schooner Bar as well. Equally impressive was the pub guitarist, Darla Fox. She was not your typical pub performer, but her personality and vocals had us returning several times during the cruise. The Royal Caribbean parties are back as well. These include both the 70s disco and the 80s party in the Royal Promenade. Further, there were two hush silent disco parties and a Caribbean deck party. Mark and the cruise director staff did a fine job hosting events and offering enough variety to mostly displace the crowds. One thing we love about Royal Caribbean is that many of the different bars and lounges on their ships have signature cocktail menus. Luckily, Mariner of the Seas is home to many of the signature bars and lounges found throughout the fleet. One of our favorite Royal Caribbean bars on any ship is a schooner bar. It's home to two of our favorite cocktails on the ship, the Lavender Daiquiri and the Sidecar. While there is no entertainment, another one of my favorite bars on Mariner of the Seas is the Bamboo Room. While the ship was busy, this venue was never crowded. The tiki drinks like the Royal Zombie or On The Run are fun and equally tasty. Other venues too have some exclusive libations. These include Latin-inspired rum-based cocktails at Boleros, Playmaker Sports Bar and Arcade, and the Barnacle and Barrel Pub. The beer lists at these last two venues are the most extensive on the ship. Mariner of the Seas does not have a dedicated wine bar, and it no longer has a champagne bar like some other Voyager class ships. Still, we thought there was a good variety when it came to bars and lounges. Plus, we found service at the bars was timely and personable. For this cruise, we stayed in a Deck 8 spacious Ocean View balcony cabin, cabin number 8666. Our portside cabin was considered a category 4B stateroom. 
According to Royal Caribbean's website, the stateroom is 203 square feet with a 42 square foot balcony. The room was not updated during the past amplification, so it still had the older green and gold color palette and decor. Immediately upon entering the room, the bathroom was to the right and the closet was to the left. The desk and love seat were closer to the entrance with our bed located next to the balcony. For a five day cruise, there was more than enough space in the cabin. In fact, we liked the older desk and closet setup better as there is more storage space. The oversized love seat was a nice feature, but it honestly needed to be replaced. The balcony offered enough space for two chairs and a small table. This allowed us to enjoy the breeze and watch the sail into our ports of call. Lastly, the bathroom was a typical cruise ship bathroom. It was small, but manageable. It did at least have a cylindrical shower door, as opposed to the shower curtains on some other cruise lines. For our cruise, we boarded Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Seas at Terminal 5 in Port Canaveral. Prior to the cruise, we did our check-in on the app and were assigned a boarding time of 10.30 a.m. Taking an Uber from our hotel, we arrived at the port right on time. From health screening to security and check-in, it took about 15 minutes. We then waited only an additional 15 minutes or so for Diamond Cruisers to be allowed on the ship. Thus, the entire embarkation process was smooth and efficient. Disembarkation was a bit more time consuming, but still efficient. We did not have to worry about catching a plane after this cruise, so we opted to use Royal Caribbean's luggage service. We received luggage tag 21, which had an estimated departure time of 8.50 a.m. There was a rather large line for disembarkation that weaved in and out of the main dining room. Still, from the elevator to luggage pickup and border patrol took less than 40 minutes. While Mariner of the Seas might not be one of the newest ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet, it certainly offers plenty of amenities for all age groups to enjoy. With competitive pricing and attractive itineraries, the cruise ship is the perfect option for cruisers looking for a quick getaway. Likewise, it's a great introductory cruise as it offers a variety of dining and activities without being overwhelming. So whether you're loyal to Royal or new to cruise, Mariner of the Seas offers a great Caribbean cruise option conveniently located near the popular Port Canaveral cruise port. And there you have it. That's our exclusive Mariner of the Seas cruise ship review. Of course, we'd love to hear from you. Have you sailed on Mariner of the Seas or another Royal Caribbean cruise ship? Let us know your review in the comment section below. I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, and if you enjoyed this video, we have tons of other cruise reviews, cruise ship tours, and cruise tip videos right here on YouTube. If you're not sure where to start, why not check out our latest cruise ship tour for Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Wonder of the Seas. We go deck by deck, exploring all of the restaurants, public venues, entertainment venues, bars and lounges, and more, as we cover every square inch of the largest cruise ship in the world, Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas.